All right, Mr. Echidna's Reezer episode, sorry, season two, episode nine review analysis. I love witches. I wonder which witch he loves the most, but considering his channel is not called Daphnut, Teefnut, uh, Minervnut, I, I think it's Echidna. Happy ReZero Day, everyone. We may have just witnessed one of the biggest cliffhangers in ReZero history, and I cannot wait to talk about this episode. Right. White Fox is just pumping out consistently good episodes one after another, and I'm so happy with this adaptation. I had a great time watching this one, and we got a lot of new information to talk about, so let's hurry up and start this analysis right from where the episode begins. Let's go! Subaru is still in the midst of a tea party with Best Girl. Last episode established a connection between the two of them after Subaru spoke openly about Return by Death. Mm -hmm. Remember, in the previous meetings between the two of them, Subaru didn't even want to talk to her. However, now that he's starting to trust her a bit more, he's finally taking the opportunity to learn from her knowledge. He and while that is a good thing, I think a lot of people... I think we should be scared of her too. There is no way that she's just doing this out of the goodness of her heart. We know that she's the Witch of Greed. There was a great moment where it's like a super soul healing therapy moment of her accepting who we are. But I think she just wants more content out of Subaru, bro. And we're just kind of like not taking this as seriously as we should. He asks her the obvious question we've all been wondering. Is there a limit to return by death? Mm. He asks... No. That nigh was preceded by... This is just conjecture. But no. Meaning... This is not an absolute. She doesn't know completely. What she said before saying no makes this not 100%. He asks her about the rabbits as well, and she explains that they're one of the three great ma beasts. The mm. white whale, the black serpent, and the great rabbit. That's the right. The white whale is the strongest of the three, but the great rabbit is infinitely more difficult to destroy. A single rabbit is capable of multiplying itself indefinitely, so you have to kill every single one at the same time if you want to destroy it. It feeds on living things and leaves nothing behind, not even blood. That's why last episode, when everyone was missing from the... Mm, even plus they licked all that shit off, so everything was so clean. Sanctuary, we couldn't find any trace of them. The yeah. Great Rabbit devoured all of it. Now, I wonder if the Great Rabbit also devoured Puck. Did Puck even come out? Is that the source of the snow? Who knows, but... Hmm. I bet Reinhardt could beat the Great Rabbit. But if Reinhardt could, why hasn't he done it already? Because it's hard to group everything in one place. Reinhardt plus Roswell. Use Roswell as bait. Group all the rabbits together. Reinhardt nukes. Easy, baby. Devoured all of it. Now, last season, we did manage to kill one of these three great mob beasts. However, yeah. this time, Subaru has very limited resources at his disposal. Remember, we had multiple armies fighting against the whale. But yeah. now, Subaru's pretty much on his own, except for Ram and Otto. But hey! Ram is great! Otto? Also very useful. But we don't have the big guns right now, huh? We don't have the big guns. And I feel like Roswell is also an ally. It may not seem like it, but in my opinion, no matter how evil and mysterious Roswell may seem, because he knows his Natsuki Subaru's regression abilities, because he knows that Subaru is his ticket to whatever goals he has, to most likely kill the dragon, right? To maybe release the seal and echidna. I think we can trust Roswell for now. Because his best interest is that we succeed. Even if he's creating these impossible scenarios, his best interest is that we succeed. And I think that he is kind of like nudging us in the right direction as we progress with season two. I'm in auto. But Subaru does get the opportunity to speak with Daphne, the Witch of Gluttony, who created the three great mob beasts. Daphne is a blindfolded lolly that drools a lot and she's tied up with chains. BDSM lollicons. Now, I don't know why this character design even exists, but... This thing eats her poop and pee for sustenance. I think I like it. Daphne spawned the three great mob beasts because she didn't- Yo, look at the drawing concepts. So here's the serpent. We've only seen the venom, right? And that's the crazy thing. And look at the purple ring, right? Like it's a little butt, but the halo is in the top here. So I'm going to also assume that this halo thing exists on the black serpent. They're really keeping the serpent a secret. When will it show up? Maybe next season? Maybe not. 
The Venom is an Elior Forest, though, where Amelia's from. Wonder there's a reason it's contained there. Now, didn't Mediator Melikora release? Did, I don't know if he released the Venom or if he released the Serpent. Because, like, he did. You know, the, the, the Venom that we see in Frozen Bond is because of Melikora, but I'm not sure if the Venom was, like, frozen and sealed away and he released that, or if it was like a serpent, who knows. Didn't want anyone to starve. Yes, Daphne wanted people to eat them. Her logic is obviously very flawed, but that's part of what makes her a witch. Now, a lot of people have been asking me to talk about things that were cut from the web novel, so I'm gonna go okay. ahead and tell you about a certain Daphne scene that was cut. You okay. see, Daphne's kinky blindfold actually has a legitimate purpose. Making direct eye contact with the Witch of Gluttony is practically a death sentence. What? In the web novel, Subaru looks into Daphne's left eye and feels an overwhelming sense of starvation to the point that he devours his own flesh and blood. It may What the fuck? Okay, I mean, a kid to say, do not let her restraints off. Don't touch her and don't look into her eyes. If her eyes are able to make you be that hungry, it's like, it just makes you starve. What happens if we touch her then? I'm scared, man. Made him so hungry that he forgot about everything else and focused only on eating his own arm. Jesus. That was the result of looking at Daphne's left eye for a few seconds. Daphne's right. What happens? The right eye. What does the right eye do? Right eye is said to be much more terrifying, and her left eye is described as nothing special in comparison. By the. How is making someone so hungry that they start eating their own body nothing special? What is it being compared to? What the hell would the right eye do? Would it just make you into food? <laughs> Some Majin Buu shit. <laughs> if you stare into Daphne's eye, you get turned into food and Daphne consumes you. I don't know. The way to all the web novel readers watching this, make sure you stick around for the end of the video because we actually got some new information today about Arc 6 that I want to talk to you about. But we cannot watch that part. Don't worry if you're an anime only because I will give a spoiler warning beforehand. Anyway okay. though, Subaru also gets to meet some of the other witches as well. Minerva, the Witch of Wrath, is a complete tsundere who wants to cleanse the world with her anger and she has the power to heal people with her fists. Mm -hmm. Typhon, the witch- And like, it's like the soul, right? The soul is exactly the thing that was healed. Well, it's because it's the soul land, but I'm sure like human body physical injuries like she could heal too, probably. Could she heal better than Fetis? Who's better at healing? Minerva or Fetis? Well, Felix is the greatest water magician in Lagunica, but Minerva's a fucking witch. I'm gonna side with the witch, bro. I don't think- I don't think Felix can heal souls, can he? I don't know. Maybe I'm underestimating Felix. They- It seems like the Rezora lore, like, Felix is a very important person. There is, like, no other healer like him in the kingdom, but Minerva's a fucking witch. So I'm gonna- Probably go with Minerva, you know? Is a complete soon. Also, Felix still hasn't healed Subaru's gate, bro. Are you really that great? If you if you still couldn't, after all this time, heal Subaru's gate. I know Subaru continuously uses Shamak and other stuff to like break the gate, but like, bro, that shit never got fixed. I bet Minerva could fix that immediately. Mm-hmm. Undere, who wants to cleanse the world with her anger, and she has the power to heal people with her fists. Typhon, the Witch of Pro. Typhon. Typhon? 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 Typhone. Pride has the ability to shatter the body of anyone that views themselves as a sinner. Now, in theory, this judgment doesn't seem too harsh, but the truth is, everyone is a sinner. Mm. Being imperfect is part of what makes us human. So, with that in mind, Typhon would theoretically punish everyone, right? Well, there's like two different ways, right? The first one was... Are you a, a bad person according to my ideals? And that's the arrogance of a child, right? Pride, where it's just like, who are you to define who good or bad is? But that first test, she rips your arm off. Does it hurt or not? It depends on if you're good or not. This one is like, do you perceive yourself? But even if everyone is a sinner, like, again, if there's someone delusional enough, like fucking Betrugus or Rosball, yeah, they're probably bad guys, but they probably deluded themselves to rationalize why their acts of heinous evil are actually good, and if people can delude themselves into being not a sinner, then this shattering wouldn't happen. Something all these witches have in common is that they share the inability to think like normal people. Because they're witches. Their logic is ethically flawed, and that's what makes them witches in the first mm -hmm. place.
By the way, I thought all three of these voice actresses did a very good job. I think I like Daphne's the best, though. She seems to be pretty busy this season, actually, because she's also the voices of Ruka and Yui. But and <laughs> What? Yui Gahama Yahalo is Daphne? She. Well, that means that Daphne's gonna lose. Yeah, 100%. Daphne's gonna lose. But anyway, before Subaru leaves the tea party, Best Girl does something to his handkerchief and. Mm. She took compensation. Apparently, she can meddle with it, interfere with it. What does that really mean, though? Does that mean she can make Petra act in a different way? I don't know. Promises that if they see each other again, she'll have something to tell him. That's right. The third witch party. Tea party. Now that I'm definitely looking forward to. When Subaru wakes up, he's still got the same head injury, which I think is a nice little detail to remind us that not much time has passed outside. That's right, because the flow of passage of time, right? Within the dream castle out, out here, right? Even if we spent like two hours in there, maybe only like 10 minutes passed. I'm not giving an actual time ratio, but you know, that's time passage. The tea party. Subaru was expecting to find Amelia when he woke up, but she gone? He didn't. When Subaru exits the tomb, he's met with an ocean of shadows, and finally, he comes face to face with Satella, the Witch of Envy. At this point, during my anime reaction, I thought that Amelia was possessed by Satella, but that means that the seal was somehow broken, so I'm like, yo, is the seal even real or not? Maybe the seal is weak, and a partial possession can happen, or it, it's like came out. Or, we know that Satella's body also was never destroyed in the past, and only her well, I don't know if only her soul was sealed away, but Satala was sealed away. Her flesh was not destroyed. So is this Satala's own body showing up? But what about the seal? Did the seal never exist? Is it just slightly loose and therefore some of it that's allowed to show up? I, I, I don't know. Now, this soundtrack alone was enough to give me chills, but the visuals in this scene were also incredible. The witch floats up to Subaru and repeatedly tells him I stay, which is basically the most intense way of saying I love you in yeah. Japanese. Yeah. Rem is actually... And the interesting thing here is how it was prophesized. Legend has it, Biko said in season one, legend has it that Satala doesn't know the human language, meaning this I love you could be just a phrase that she picked up because she has an understanding of what that means, but she's not form forming complete sentences, which makes me think that the legend might be real. Rem is actually the only other character to use this word so far in the story. Mm -hmm. Subaru did it to Beatrice once, but he was just messing with her, so that doesn't count. But anyway, in the web novel, the Holy of shit. I love yous pretty much took up the entire page, so the anime did cut a lot of them, but that's really no big deal. Another detail you might find interesting is that the Witch of Envy has the same voice- Voice actor as Amelia, yep. This actress as Amelia. This is- What does that mean? They're the same person? Are they trolling? I don't know. There's a lot of parallels. From the beginning, Amelia has all the aesthetics of Satala, but... <sighs> what the fuck is happening? This is the case in both the sub and the dub, so it's definitely not just a choice it's they intentional. made for no reason. It's intentional. This decision only further implies that there is some connection between Amelia and the witch. Absolutely. So if you guys have any theories as to why Amelia and Satella share the same voice actors, well, I thought it has to do with the day of the ordeal, right? Petrogus's goal was to find good vessels for Satala. But the more I think about it, why the fuck do we need a vessel for Satala? She has her own body. Maybe the body is unusable now. Yeah, that could be something, right? Maybe the reason that we need, like, uh, potentially Amelia to have Satala possess the body is because her old body is no longer usable. It was never destroyed. It was said, the legend says the flesh was never destroyed, but it's... I don't know. Yes, Amelia did introduce herself as Satala in the first run, but there's nothing in the first loop that suggests that she actually is Satala, specifically from the dialogue between Puck and Amelia about how using that name Satala was pretty troll. Clearly, she was using it as a filter to check what Natsuki Subaru is really all about. I do not believe for a fact that the first run, that Amelia was Satala. There is no way. There's so many logical inconsistencies surrounding the dialogue of everyone in that run that suggests that she's not Satala and she's just trolling. I would like to read your thoughts in the comment section below. Anyway, Garfield saves Subaru from the Sea of Shadows, and then we're left with a mass- That's pretty cool. Garfield attacks Satala, and Satala dodged it. Garfield stronger than Satala confirmed? Of ...cliffhanger on top of a mountain of questions. First of all, why is the Witch of Envy here at the Sanctuary? Well, I know why she's here, because she's fucking envious that we were in the dreamscape, you know, telling Echidna all our secrets, and... Basically, you turned the phone off and you cheated on your girlfriend and she's here. 
But like, how is she here? That is something I have no idea about. I gave you the different theories, right, about the body not being destroyed, Amelia potentially possessed, a potentially weakened seal, partial possession, her actual body showing up. I don't know, but how is she here? The only time we see her is when Subaru pisses her off. But even then, it's usually just an unseen hand and nothing more. So why did she appear in person this time? And what did Subaru do to... Well, there is a little bit more and more, right? The, in the Annie News Cut content showed us that the more we return by death, the closer we get to Satala. And we've seen in Season 1 more of her face being re revealed, right? Before, it was just the unseen hand. Then it was like the, her lips with the purple lipsticks. Then it was like a silhouette of her body that thrashed Betrius. And now she's here seemingly in flesh seemingly to piss her off and let's not forget the most important question of all why does she love subaru i don't know i that is the greatest mystery of all and one way that we could understand this is if time travel shit is possible right now it's impossible to know but we could theorize if time travel shit is involved in the story and it is regression then Perhaps Satala has seen a version of Subaru that we've never seen in a different timeline in the future. I don't know. That was so important to her. Or maybe... Oh! Here's another one! Here's another one! Satala, a uh, past lover 400 years ago, was a person like Subaru. Maybe the entire personality... Oh! I never thought about it that way! Okay. Because I thought... Does that make sense? 400 years ago, there was somebody that she was in love with, and it was basically Natsuki Subaru, but it wasn't. And now she's found, and he died for whatever reason. Maybe the reason that she destroyed the world is because the world was the reason for Satala's death. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That, that supposed Natsuki Subaru's death, right? In the past, there was someone that resembled Natsuki Subaru so much that she fell in love with. But due to whatever, he was executed by the world. Some bullshit system. I don't know. And that's why she was so upset, consumed all the different witches, gathered all the powers, and just destroyed the world. And now she's finally found someone that resembles her past lover. That theory I like. I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with that theory. Yup, yup, yup. I'm gonna go with that theory. We'll have to build up on it, but this... Uh, before this, the vague idea was... Something about Attack on Titan. <laughs> Hear me out. Past. <laughs> Past, present, future. All connected. And that's why Subaru said something 2,000 years in Season 1. About the, 2000, the number 2000 in the season finale. I don't know. I, I, I can definitely go with the reincarnation of Past Lover. But I feel like... Yes. The more I think about it... Natsuki Subaru... Resembles someone... That she fell in love with in the past. And now she's doing this shit. And... Her obsession with... Her obsession with not letting him die. Think about that. Think about that. Think about that. Think about that. Her obsession... With not letting people, like, uh, Subaru die. What is the reason Return, of death, return by Death exists, right? Echidna says it. It's only you, bro. Like, you... You... Pre like, preventing you from dying is all that fucking matters. Right? If we think about from this perspective of her lost lover dying due to some unfair reason, and that's why she destroyed the world. Yeah. I like that. I like this. As if Satella wasn't already a big enough cliffhanger, the after credits scene leaves us with yet another massive reveal. Roswell calmly clutches his gospel as he welcomes the growing shadows that slowly surround him. Before he dies, he says the haunting words, If you wish to walk through hell, I will gladly accompany you. Accompany you. Yes! If you wish to live in hell, I'll strive hell for is hell. What I shall strive for. Try not to make any mistakes. Ne Next time, Natsuki Subaru. Oh. I love Roswell so much, bro. The absolute faith he has in Natsuki. Well, here's the thing. Does he have faith in Natsuki Subaru? Or does he have faith in his grimoire? Think about that for a second. The reason that he's doing all these actions is due to the instructions in the grimoire that tells the, the true path. But he was also suspicious of Subaru. 
in Arc 2 in the beginning when Ram was on his lap. To the point he was like, let's kill him, maybe. Now, maybe the Grimoire told him to say that. I, I, don't, I don't really know. But maybe in the beginning, he wasn't too sure of how real this kid was. Because the book is telling him to do all this shit. And Roswell's like, this is crazy. But like, shit. This book tells the truth. I'm going to do it. So he did it. And it was like, oh my god, this kid actually showed up the mansion. Like, think about that. Think about, think about that, bro. In the beginning of Arc 2, Roswell shows up at the mansion. And he's like, holy shit. Yo, this, this kid is actually here. The book is working. But he's like not too completely sure yet. He's like, all right, let's be suspicious though. Let's, let's keep our guard up or something, right? <laughs> and, and, then, and then later, he solves the village. And then he shows up with Ulgo at the end. He's like, hmm. Yo, Natsuki Super, you're, you're fucking cooking. Yo, this book? This book said you do this shit and you're actually doing it. Okay, okay. <laughs> and now he's subjugated the white whale and just like, yep, he's the real deal. Yeah. Ever since the whale, I think Roswell's like, okay, this is the real deal. I'm gonna listen to the book. Fuck it. We're just gonna blindly read the book. Try not to make any mistakes next time, Natsuki Subaru. Yes, Roswell is not afraid of dying because he knows that Subaru will save him next yes! time. Yes! scene very clearly implied that he Roswell knows! is aware of Subaru's He knows, ability. bro! For the entirety of this anime, Ro This is the scene I'm talking about, the suspicion that doesn't really add up, but, you know, in the beginning, he's still trying to see if, like, if he's a real deal or not. Roswell has been one of ReZero's greatest mysteries. Absolutely. Today, this episode revealed two of his darkest secrets. Roswell has a gospel, and yeah. he knows about Return by yeah. Death. Yeah, what other secrets does he have, though? Because I know that's not the extent of this character. There's got to be more. This explains why he's been so fascinated with Subaru all this mm -hmm. time. This mm -hmm. explains why he didn't hesitate to let Amelia die in season one. Yep. This explains why he has complete faith in Subaru. This explains why he hired Elsa to steal <laughs> Amelia's fucking pendant. Subaru. Roswell didn't help him because he knew Subaru would fix everything on his own. Roswell was aware of this all along. Yeah. If you go back right now and rewatch season one, pay close attention to everything Roswell says. Oh, trust me. I have been listening to every dialogue, even the role selection, him smiling when Subaru fucks up. That was pretty much it. That was like, oh my God, this dude. It does. With the context this episode provided, Roswell's behavior will start yep. making a lot more sense. Like I have been so fucking locked in whenever Roswell isn't seen. Just schizo just obsessing over everything he says and how everything is so contradictory to his actions but now the answers are there this episode heavily implied that roswell knows about return by death mm -hmm. however there's still many questions about him that remain unanswered what is written in roswell's gospel and what type of gospel is it how does i'm gonna guess it's the other second copy the true copies of the tomb of wisdom which is known as the grimoire that tells the true path more specific details of the future but the other defect gospels, which most likely Betrugus' has, which we have, that's not the same one, right? That, that's my guess. What does he know about Subaru's ability? And most importantly, what is his goal? This sh his goal is to kill the dragon to free a kid in a seal. show makes me feel like every time we get some answers, we're just- What the hell is that knife? Yo, that's the Appa knife. What the hell is- Remember this beginning of season two? The Appa pairing knife and the whole forbidden Appa theory was there. Just left with more questions than before. But thankfully, this season isn't even halfway done. Is that season one knife? I don't remember season one knife. I remember season two knife though. There was an arc two knife? What did we use a knife for? It was... I remember a sword given by the Arlam villagers. It's just a man mansion kitchen? Potato oh, okay, just potato feeling. Okay, okay, never mind. We're almost finished with the first core, but there's still a lot more ReZero on its way. So what can we expect from the next episode? I want more Roswell scenes. I want third tea party with Echidna too. Well, it's most likely going to be another death for Subaru because, I mean, there's really no escaping the way. Oh, right. We haven't died yet either. True, true, true. We got to get through this loop right now. Which of Envy. 400 years ago in ReZero history, the witch literally destroyed half of the world with her sh- and, and, and the craziest shit, remember, the world of ReZero is flat, right? Flat world, water falls at the edges, but what, how do you destroy half of a flat world? And the existing fucking map, right? We have the ReZero map as well, which is like 
Lugunica on the right side, Kararagi left, Valakia south, and Gusteko, I think? The holy shit on, on, in north. This seems like it's pretty full, man. Unless... It's, it has been 400 years, right? It has been 400 years, therefore half of it is back. I wonder exactly which part of the world was grazed by Satella, right? Was Valakia fucked up? Was Kararagi fucked up? Was Gusteko fucked up? Maybe Lugunica? I don't know. Or maybe even a crazier theory is the reason that the ReZero world is flat is because Satella made it flat. It used to be a sphere, but she cut half of the sphere and now it's just a flat world with a cylinder now. And now do we assume that this, this world is a, is a cylinder? <laughs> you know what I mean? You know what I mean? <laughs> It's, it's, it's not really a flat, it seems a flat world, but it's a cylinder now, and then this other half? This is what got, ha this is what got, <laughs> this, this is the part of the world that was destroyed by Satella. Because in the history books, it was a sphere. In the history book, it was a sphere. But, uh, I don't know, it just makes you think, right? It, it really makes you think of like, how does this flat world... And what about the waterfalls too? I, and it, it, half the world, what does that mean? Ugh. Shadows. It took the combined effort of the world's greatest heroes to stop her, so this doesn't look like a problem that Subaru can fix on his own. But, I don't know, Otto could probably save him, right? Probably. I thought this episode went by extremely fast. All Otto has to do is break the horn of the rabbit and Otto will be able to fucking control the great rabbits, bro. Yeah. Otto can talk to it, too. It's so easy. Bro. Otto can be the bunny master. Come on. Fast. In fact, I feel like this was the shortest one yet. But despite that, it surprisingly didn't feel rushed at all. I am sad that I didn't get to see Carmilla and Sekhmet, but I'm still very satisfied with what we did get. Maybe we'll see them in the third witch party. This was obviously another 10 out of 10 episode. <laughs> Last one was 14 out of 10. Have some respect for the show, Akira. This is a 15 out of 10 episode. Episode, but I do think the previous one was still a lot better. For All right, fair. For me, the for me though, I I I only care about Roswell shit. <laughs> like, a kid, a kid that's bias is a kid that scenes, right? My bias is Roswell scenes. Even if Roswell showed up for 10 seconds in the post credit scene, that revelation alone is enough to make it be like, yup, my favorite episode. The OST during the Satella reveal was definitely the highlight of this episode. Yeah, dude, Satella, like the soundtrack that's about to play right now, it's so fucking haunting. Like you can, even like the shadows like creeping up, you can hear like this morbid choir. It's so eerie. I was hoping to hear Call of the Witch, but honestly, this new song fit the scene perfectly, and yeah, I'm glad I like they it. went with it. I like the new it. voice actresses did a very good job, too. The witches pretty much sound exactly how I expected them to, so I'm super thankful that ReZero has such a talented group of VAs. Before I go, I want to shout out Giro Gear once again for making me this new channel art. It looks absolutely incredible so thank you once again man i also want to thank everyone who's been subscribed to my channel i just hit 50k this morning which is a milestone i never crazy shit huh four years ago 50k now reaching two three hundred thousand bro never imagined could be a real it's actually fucking stupid how big his channel is 300k like damn bro is fucking he the he him for sure god damn 300k subs that's no fucking joke. Reality, so to all my subscribers, I just want to say, I love you. Thank you everyone for watching. I and I think the rest of this shit is arc six stuff that I have no business touching. I refuse to be spoiled. That ruins all the fucking fun of this shit. But hey, here's the video, guys. Please go check out Mr. Echidna's channel if you haven't already. Go like, give it a like, and I'll see you next time.